In today's world, there can be completely stressful times, isolation, dysfunction, cancel culture, divided viewpoints, polarized news being driven into our consciousness everywhere. Well, today I want to share a very special guest with you on learning how to become loving. Let's dive deep into what does it mean, you guys, how we're going to do this? How do we actually be loving in the midst of all of this divided, polarized, fear, hate, and all the above? Welcome to the Dr. Aaron podcast. This is a top spiritual psychology coach podcast to inspire and teach you how to transform your trauma, birth your soul's purpose and manifest your dreams. Hi, I'm Dr. Aaron, Dr. Divinity. I'm committed to bringing you the best coaching tips, spiritual advice, trauma healing, and metaphysical recovery secrets. I'm here to help you monetize your spiritual gifts and love your life. I want you to know that I've been exactly where you are, and I believe in you. Together, we're awakening the world. Hi, my soul family. I'm super excited to share a very special guest with you today, Danielle Laporte. She is a member of Oprah's Super Soul 100 group. Danielle is a creator of the Heart Centered Membership and the Heart Centered Leadership Program with over 400 leaders in 30 countries hosting conversations, circles, retreats, and workshops of all kinds of communities and businesses around the world. But who she really is for me is somebody who is steeped in love really, truly committed to bringing divine work to the world. I'm super excited to dive deep with this soul sister today to really discover and inquire into how do we love even deeper? So how are you? I'm so incredibly excited to just dive deep and, and feel into your heart. You know, I mm. watch you online. I know you through many of my peers and girlfriends and stuff. And mm. the thing about you, Daniela, is that when I watch anything, your story, anything, I feel like I'm home. I really authentically feel like that. I'm mm. like, oh, mm. I feel like I can exhale when I come into your presence, which is really says a mm. lot about who you are as a leader. And I'm sure it's taken you some time to fully mm. ground into all of it. How are you? Mm -hmm. I feel really calm right now. Like it's this, um, it's more glide than grind. Yeah. And you know, this is, we're in a book campaign. This is like birth mode, Oof. birth and promote mode. And it feels, I'm aware more this time of just, uh, thought forms, like really, this will be as easy as I think it will be. Yeah. 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 Totally. totally. So let's dive into this because, yeah. you know, how to be loving, like, let's, this is challenging right now in this world. <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I think that as we know, the universe is expanding mm -hmm. at all points in time. And I do believe the frequencies are getting more intense. And then we have social media, which is amplifying everything. I, I mean, we have this polarity that is just off the charts from the cancel culture to, you know, every viewpoint to everything going on. How in the world do we be loving in the midst of all this? Mm. You have to want to be. So I think it starts with that. Like, um, I think now's the time to choose a side, but you choose the side that includes everybody. It's like, you know, uh, so this is your free will. You're going to use your self agency to play for love, to be more compassionate, all those things that we know love are, but it's a choice. Like we have to start there. This is choicefulness. Yeah. Yeah. I remember back, I used to be very codependent back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I remember someone asked me, what is your definition of love? And I had all these different, you know, conversations of what it should be. Mm -hmm. And then someone said, love just is, this was like a long time ago. And I was like, wow, that's like so deep, you know, <laughs> and it's like, what, but what, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What does that mean? Right. Yeah. But then of course, as you know, getting developed in all the work and diving so deep into divine and having our own revelations and enlightenment. There's such moments of oneness, mm -hmm. but then human beingness comes in as well. So what is it about this book? What is it for you? What does it mean to you writing this book? Well, it feels like a love letter to the part in all of us who know that 
love is actually the game changer and it's time to start acting like that that love isn't just something we do when we're at home or with our friends or our family it's something we need to do in how we design politics and educational systems and medical systems like it needs to be included in the highest levels mm -hmm. of society and it's time to stop leaving it at the door when we walk into different environments like and this means our language shifts. We use the words. <laughs> we show up with our compassionate vocabulary. It means our tone is different. It means we prioritize differently. It means we get in touch with a holy anger instead of the ego anger that just wants to be right. Like that our, you know, all the justice that everybody's so many of us are seeking for and choosing sides about that really it's about like what's going to benefit everybody that mm -hmm. takes daring and courage and it's like complex conversation but it only works if it benefits everybody or at the very least if you're aware of how your decisions in your community and your workplace and your vote with your dollar all of the things even within your own family how you're going to cause harm or how you're going to benefit all the players at the table or find, mm -hmm. you know, get everybody at the table to start with, but. Which brings up a really important point. So you talk a lot about, you know, the desire. And I think that we've been so yeah. driven off of desire and goals yeah. and really playing into a vision of embodiment, maybe the whole time. But then we go to this place of virtue. I've heard you speak about, which I mm -hmm. think is really the paradigm, the biggest paradigm we're going through as a as a globe as one family as a unity that we are of like how do we go from really producing because we have to survive going to virtue and and what does that mean because we're i mean i know i've gone through the hustle phase of my career and getting burned out and and going through all that and then going what am i actually doing if mm -hmm. i'm not enjoying this process mm -hmm. then i'm completely out of my own principles Mm -hmm. So what does it look like for you? Let's just take a particular case. Let's pretend somebody's out there. They've gone through some dysfunctional relationships because nine out of 10 people go through dysfunctional relationships, right? Maybe mm -hmm. they're dealing with money issues and maybe they need to go out and go into sales to try and make it happen. How do they live virtuously mm -hmm. and actually get something done? Mm -hmm. You have to look at the origin of desire. So Buddhism teaches that desire is a cause of suffering so it's the clinging it's the wanting things to be the way they aren't desire is an emotion emotions come from the unconscious self so it's not the conscious part of ourselves that's wanting because when you when you're more conscious aware awake enlightened not that any of us have gotten there but when you move towards that you know higher vibration you're going to want for less You'll be more present with what you have. Nervous system will be much more regulated. So you're not hooked. You know, it's not the hungry ghost that's driving you. So the evolution of desire is, I think, aspiration. So I'm not, I'm not wanting, needing, striving. I like go crush my goals so that I feel more worthy and get the love I never got from whoever I needed it from. I'm aspiring, I'm using, you know, we talked about free will earlier. I'm using my free will to align with a higher way of being. Mm -hmm. So you can still want all the things. You can still want to crush your sales goals and you can still want to, of course, make a difference in the world, but it's on behalf of loving kindness. It's for benefiting everybody. So you go from like kind of lower vibe, wanting and doing whatever you got to take to get it and those do or die goals which are going to burn your adrenal system you're going to wake up one day and go why have i been running mm -hmm. to you know what i'm setting an intention from my heart from my, mo my most conscious place from my center to embody love in all i do okay that's clear you send a clear signal <laughs> to all systems you will think differently. Yeah. You will go after different things. You'll go after them in a different way. Mm -hmm. So I want to get vulnerable here. I consider you a peer and, you know, we're both in the world doing work and stuff. 
And one of the things that I think has been shocking in, in doing this work for me was I didn't realize some of the challenges that were going to come along with it. Mm-hmm. And, and not to bring up anything that other than total respect for you. But I remember one of the first times I heard about you and, and you were getting kind of like a cancel culture type of a thing happening around one of your other books. And I remember thinking I had so much respect for you because I thought that would be really hard, but you handled it so beautifully and so powerfully. And I, and I have always remembered that in the moment when I was going through something and with, with clients, and cause we know we can't please all clients and we can be as loving as possible and think we're doing everything in harmony and think we're just, you know, fulfilling upon contracts and someone can think we're the worst person in the world or view and take it differently than we intended. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to speak to that because I think there's people out there because you can be as loving as possible, but someone may not think you're being loving mm-hmm. and they're going to be totally offended by no matter what you do, you can mm-hmm. have the greatest intentions and be loving and want the highest for everyone. But there's always going to be people that see you as, as n- not that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You cannot control what anybody else thinks or feels or does. Uh, we're all unhealed. Everybody is carrying some degree of trauma Mm -hmm. around with them. We are living at a time where it's just getting, it's just a just projection festival. (laughs) Um, And that's helped me. I mean, that my awareness of my own wounds and that kind of self-intimacy has helped me meet things more gently without being pulled off my center. Like I know my intentions. I know the conversations I have with my heart. Mm -hmm. I know where my fears are as much as I can be conscious right now. And I'm going to abide in that. I'm going to have some patience for other people's wounds and opinions Mm -hmm. and not always easy, but that's it. And also I think, you know, just seeing I think, especially with women on the personal development path, it, here's the irony. It gets harder to see everybody as our reflection. Mm. Like I just think, oh yeah, the universal principle that everybody's my reflection that applies except for there's no way that guy and that behavior, that narcissism or that manipulation, whatever, that is not a reflection of me because I've done so much work. I'm so much more loving and compassionate all part of that may be true. I may be more loving and compassionate. I may have done a lot of work, but it's a universal law, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I have to look at where's my call out culture within me. Where's my tyranny? Where's my greed? Mm -hmm. And it may be just a tiny little seed frequency, like a little speck, or it may be that what they're bringing up for me, the reflection is not so much their behavior, but the pain that they have put on the table that has been triggered in me. It's like, oh, this really feels like a massive betrayal. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, then I have some betrayal wound that isn't healed yet because I'm, because I've created this because I'm so triggered by it. I have to respond to it. I always think of it like, yeah, like it's like the facts, what's actually happening where, you know, there is a cause and effect. And sometimes there's law that comes into it. Sometimes there's putting boundaries. Sometimes there's just forgiveness, Mm -hmm. whatever that is. But I think the difference for me, where I used to be reactive or take things so personal, you can go through a storm, but you're like, I'm in a storm. Okay, cool. How do we handle this? How do we take cover? How do we deal with this versus, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I'm in a storm. And let me just get completely reactive with everything and take offense to it. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who was in a storm. She was in a legal situation with somebody. It was a business was dissolving. And, you know, I'd read some of the emails going back and forth and you could hear all the hooks and that were coming at her. Mm -hmm. And she was, she was taking the bait every time she'd be like, well, let me explain this. And I'm not going to explain, explain that. And I said, you know, what if you just gave it zero more energy? Yes. Like it's happening. You're going to, if you have to go to court, you go to court. You're not in denial, but it just like stop taking the bait yeah. so that not just so you can, you know, piss the other person off because it will not, not feeding, you know, their own ego stuff to fight, but so that you can concentrate on the lesson and actually get through it. Yeah. Like they want to fight. 
it's bringing up all these issues around you about your overgiving and feeling on the outside. Just deal with those issues of overgiving and feeling on the outside. Mm-hmm. While you give the rest of the drama that's just serving to kick it up, zero more energy. Yeah, you go heal. Let them just off gas. Mm-hmm. So good. So good. Mm-hmm. And you are teaming up with one of my all time mentors, um, Michael Bernard Beckwith. I love oh, yeah. That. Yes, your church. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about church. Then, oh. Yeah. Well, church is going to be um, an online event, two hour online event on Sunday, October 16th. Mm-hmm. And if you go grab a couple copies of How to Be Loving, you come to our site, daniellelaporte.com slash how to be loving. Let us know you got some copies. And then we give you a ticket to church. Leanne Rhymes is going to open up with um, singing from her new album, God's Work, mm. which is amazing. And Beautiful Chorus is going to be there to sing. Amazing. And then Reverend Beckwith is going to give us a blessing. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. How to be loving. I think it's one of the greatest masteries we can do, no matter what's happening, no matter how our families acting or the politicians are acting or whatever. Mm -hmm. How do we stay in that neutral space and holding that? And I think it's Mm -hmm. important for people to know what you're still able to do in that. Like, can you still, right? You can still have your truth. You can still put boundaries. You could still even go into, you know, saying goodbye to somebody. You can still love them. So Mm -hmm. years ago, when I went through the final chapter of my codependency, the thing that held it after was thinking that I didn't love him, that he was a narcissist. He was this, Mm. he was that, all that. What finally healed it for me is when I actually realized that I'll always love him Mm. and I love him now and I'll always love him. And it actually was the one thing that released the resistance to it because it was the truth. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I think we, there's so much shame, especially in that dynamic, you know, an empathic, sensitive woman with a narcissistic male, which seems to be like a dance that a lot of people do these days. Um, I think there's all this shame that comes in with, we let ourselves be treated like that. We perpetuated that dynamic. And then we get more conscious and we go a little bit deeper and say, we actually brought this in. We facilitated that. We are 50% of that dynamic. We are no more high vibration necessarily Mm -hmm. than they are. So there's this like, there's this embarrassment and that shame prevents us from going to that place of like, even though they did all these things, I will always love them. Even though I wasn't totally conscious and mature, I will always love them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually the heart's default. And it doesn't mean you are going to continue with codependency. It doesn't mean that you're not awake. It means that you got it. You actually got the lesson. Yeah. Yeah. You take a hundred percent responsibility and realize he was just, you know, part of my belief systems tracking in that I'm not lovable, you Mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. playing into the whole, the whole grand thing is play of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so what, what is your mission with this book? Like truly what, obviously you want to help people love, but like, what is it for you? Mm -hmm. What's the virtue for you? Uh, The book is about reverence Mm. and it's about going beyond tolerating your own stuff to actually being reverent with it. Like there's some awe for your doubt and your anxiety and your fear And you can see how it's expanding you and how, you know, every time my doubt shows up, I say, well, you are persistent. (laughs) That's amazing. And thank you. You helped me double down on my faith. So I can only have respect for such a great outcome. Mm -hmm. So it's a reverence for the shadow. And it's that reverence that creates more light. That's how you find the diamond in the darkness. I love that. I love the concept that life is like a masterclass. And I love this concept of thinking like everything has challenged me to love. Everything is the opportunity to unconditionally love. Mm -hmm. And like, wow, then you look at, there's no problems. There's no, there's nothing. There's just, it's all growing me. It's all expanding me. It's all fertilizer. Yeah. (laughs) It's all fertilizer. I love that. So awesome. So I want to ask you a couple other things. So, so I just want to know just a little bit deeper what were the hardest things that you went through earlier when you weren't able to just love? 
who were mm. you? Who was that? Mm. You know? mm. Um, well, I've always been a lover and a relater. Like I've always relationships have been my way of growing. That was clear. I think how my lack of consciousness showed up was just a little mouthier, a little bolder, a little more assertive, brazen, which was just a lot of ego wanting to help me be seen. Mm -hmm. And then you wise up a bit and you get softer and you do the job. Like I see myself, I see myself. It's my job to see me, my shadow and my light, my, um, my dark side and my loveliness. Mm -hmm. And then the ego starts to chill out a little more. I don't, you know, it's not saying, ah, oh, go say that thing at that party. You know, <laughs> I'm not so concerned about how many likes I get on a post, you know, uh, maybe not as much, but I still not as much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, still. For sure. It's interesting how, what people perceive love to be, you know, because someone can love you more than someone else. And they may not stay in the tone that you consider loving, but they may love you mm -hmm. more than anybody else. And, and I think that that's been a, a growth for me because I literally love, like, I love people so much. I love my <laughs> clients. I love my community. And sometimes I can be brass, but, and so it could be interpreted as not, but I really, really it's do. It's such a great saying brass. It really does. It's like, like it conveys. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. 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 So tell people about your other events. You have live events right now, right? There's lots happening. I mean, really Instagram is like the center of my world. Everything is pointing towards the Sunday church on October 16th. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. I cannot wait to be there and celebrate you and honor, cool. honor a divine woman and just you know, really getting how spiritual and how deep and how evolved. And I consider you completely enlightened. You may not, but I do. So <laughs> I just want you to know that I see you. I'll, t I'll I, tell I my publisher, you, maybe I'll get a bigger book advance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. I see you. Okay. Cause we Thank can't you. say that, but you come on, Lizra, I see you. Okay. So tell mm -hmm. people also, of course, they know your social media stuff, but just tell them where they can find you and your website. Yeah, I'm at Danielle Laporte on social and website is daniellelaporte.com. I have a membership called Heart Centered Membership. It's a spiritual support community. And I have a coaching facilitating program called Heart Centered Leadership Program. So we've got like 400 coaches and leaders like in the workplace and in yoga studios so teaching cool. about virtue and resilience. Yeah, it's really cool. So let's dive deep just for one more second around trauma. So in our community, we teach a lot of trauma work and how the subconscious mind is connected with divine mind and universal law and how trauma is not necessarily what happens to you, but trauma is what happens within you. And the moment that we have a frequency of, of putting a meaning on something, we create a, fre a frequency and we decide a divided perspective. I'm not lovable. Something's wrong with me. I'm not enough. I don't want to live. And it literally tags the DNA, the epigenetics and makes an engram. Okay. So what would you say to somebody that is trying to love, but they have a lot of trauma? You know, what advice mm -hmm. would you give them if they haven't began to do mm -hmm. their trauma work? What would you tell them? Mm -hmm. I think ultimately it's about what I would call truthful identification that you're seeing that you are an energetic being, a spiritual being, um, that you have a consciousness that goes beyond what's happened to you. And you're not the trauma. You're not the trauma. We are not what happened to us. And that, I mean, you could look at that and go, that's a spiritual bypass. It's actually, it's total empowerment. So when you see that you are not what happened to you, then you can really go deep and look at the impacts of what happened to you, what it did to your nervous system, how it affected your life and your choices and all those patterns that got put into place. And then I think eventually, ideally, we've got to move on from the trauma. So, I mean, this is one of the things I talk about and how to be loving is that so many of us can like do the work. We do the breathing and we do the tapping and we do the workshops and we do all the right things. And we are actually like legit healing. But then there's that part of us, just that little unhealed bit, the ego mind that wants to dig it up. And we keep telling the same story. Like the trauma just gets so baked into our identity. Like mm -hmm. I'm an addict. 
I'm a survivor. I am a, you know, you kind of fill in the blank. <laughs> You're not just that. No, it's no. A, that was an incident that created a, you know, major effect. So this is why I, you know, I've had thousands of hours of therapy, lots of different kinds of therapy, lots of different types of spiritual work, energy work. And, it, and I can see now the shadow side of therapy as well. And I credit my psychotherapist with just like changing my life, saving my life. If I had five children, they'd have, I would name them all after my various shrinks, you know. Um, but there's a time where you need to say, okay, like enough of going down this path because you're just re-traumatizing yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, just, yeah, the, the re-wounding. Mm -hmm. I love that. So I'm hearing you say, you know, basically, which is the truth is we're not these bodies. We're not our beliefs. We're not our trauma. We're something way beyond that. We're the crater, you know, creating with one with the universe and that we can really just witness our story, witness the experience, witness all that, and at least get some type of a insight around that. Yeah. And move into seeing your capacity to heal it. Like you are capable of restoration mm -hmm. happens all the time people get to the other side of trauma all the time and they're wiser and um more resilient because of it mm. yeah i love Me that too. i love that okay i have to ask you one last question probably the okay. most important question where did you get those glasses like we all <laughs> because we love the glasses so much so i'm like where i'll buy them some right thank now you. they're thank so you. good <laughs> uh these are chanel yeah, they are beautiful. You're a stunning thank woman you. inside and out. So thank you so much for sharing your heart with me. Really mm. beautiful. I'm very excited for the world to get more of you. Mm. The beautiful you. Sure. Thank okay, you guys. And go follow her. Go to this event. Go to church. We want to mm. go to church, right? It's a whole new realm of church in the world these days. And this is absolutely where we need to be in the heart. So thank you so much. Have a beautiful and blessed day again. You guys live your truth. Thank you for tuning into the Dr. Aaron podcast. If you're ready to reprogram your subconscious mind, transform your trauma and birth your soul's calling, or if you're ready to become an accredited certified spiritual psychology coach and E4 trauma method facilitator and get trained in spiritual psychology, universal law, intergenerational trauma work, past life regression work, metaphysics of mind, and so much more, go to soulciety.com or drerin.tv. If you're receiving value from the show, I would love it if you share it with a friend and give it a five-star review. Also, you can join me in one of my live free trainings. You can find it right on the website as well, or in my bio link across all social media. I'm drerin.tv across all platforms. Dr erin.tv. Have a beautiful day and may you live your truth.